morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I'm in early this morning because I am doing some station learning with my AP students. We're doing a Le Chatelier lab, so I'll give you all the details about it. It's actually one of my favorite labs. This is um, actually the first school that I've ever done a Le Chatelier lab in, and um, I absolutely love it. And so a lot of these different equilibrium systems do a great job of talking about stresses and you know how that affects the equilibrium position. Of course, in AP, our focus is on Q versus K, so I'm going to also show you how I tried to integrate that into my lab today as well. So I'm gonna get ready for the lab. Um, I had to go make some copies because my CP kids do have a quiz today. I'm gonna incorporate a little bit of modeling into that quiz besides formula writing and balancing. So all those good skills are gonna be coming together on one nice short quiz for the students today. So I'm gonna go do that, but I will definitely check in with you guys in a little bit and tell you all about my Le Chatelier lab. I had a very productive day. I was hoping to catch up with you guys actually this morning because I had first period prep, but I have been, like I said, in my last few videos, I've been trying to batch my tasks together. So I was really focusing on trying to get my copies ready for the next week, specifically for my CP class. And then during my prep period, during period 10, I had a student come in and do something, but then I also was trying to do all my agendas for CP next week. So I fortunately got all my copies done for the CP class next week, and I also got all my agendas done pretty much. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing with the CP class. So that kind of takes one thing off the list and I can really just focus on the AP class next week. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Le Chatelier lab that I did with my AP students today. It's actually a similar lab that we do in the CP and honors sections. However, obviously we do it a little bit earlier in the school year because we got to get to the exam date. And so with the Le Chatelier lab, um, I modified it so that it included some pre-lab work. The first page incorporated some calculations. It also incorporated some rationalizing between like why the reaction is going to shift in a particular direction based on relationships between Q and K. So that was really essential for the students to get working in the lab area. The students did really well with the pre-lab work. I would say that took probably about 20 minutes or so, but it got them warmed up to experience what was going on in the actual stations area. So behind me, I have a whole bunch of different stations set up. I had six different stations stations and all of them were different equilibria systems. I asked the students to answer some questions based on that information but then I incorporated the use of Q and K so that we can kind of take it up more to the AP level. Now whenever I set up my station learning I always try to include the important concepts that the students are supposed to know so that they can apply that to the questions at the station. And then the other thing that I try to do is always include some sort of cleanup instructions. I tell my students I am only one person it's not possible for me to clean up every single thing. And so on the station sign gives them cleanup directions and I ask them to please make sure that they clean up their station as soon as they're done in their area. That way it's set up for the students that are supposed to come in next and complete that station. Many of the stations are very simple in terms of the setup. You don't really need a whole lot of equipment or chemicals. Honestly, the students were just working with indicator and some sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid. And then of course I had the students use a um, cobalt system and they were looking at the complex ion formation and how that adjusts the Q and the K. I had them look at temperature changes, concentration changes. Unfortunately, I didn't do a pressure change. I don't know if any of you have any ideas for a pressure change that you could incorporate. I felt like this lab was a really good opportunity for the students to dig deeper into Le Chatelier. Um, I got a lot of questions about like, you know, the fact that the color change, does it mean it's still at equilibrium? And so we had to kind of circle back to like, what's equilibrium, right? It appears macroscopically static, but on the particulate level, there's a lot going on. It's very chaotic. And so the students, again, internalize the fact that, okay, you know, K is not changing. It's really the ratio of reactants and products changing. And so that made a big difference in their understanding of like what Le Chatelier principle is. And then of course, what the K value actually represents. Now we did take a look at some temperature changes and obviously that is really focusing on the fact that, you know, when we have endothermic processes an increase in temperature is really gonna favor those products. And I really think that that helped them to also internalize the information because it's often hard for the students to understand 
understand that the actual K value is changing completely. My favorite station was probably the last one that was more of the thinking station where the students had to look at a cobalt system. They had to add some water to it. And then when you put the acetone inside, it turns this really cool um, like teal color. And so the students had to think about like, what's causing it to turn that teal color? Like what is going on on the particle level? How is the acetone interacting with the molecules inside of this system? And so um, that was a really interesting thing to hear them talk about. I thought it was a really nice way to think about, you know, not only is it just about like reacting things and increasing or decreasing concentration, but you can also cause things like intramolecular forces to also affect the equilibrium position. Now I'll tell you a little bit about each station. So the first station was a very simple like indicator station. We were just looking at how um, bromothymal blue changes with the addition of acid and base. This is really important because it helps the students to recognize that things can react with the different components of the equilibria and that can cause shifting as well. And so what I like so much about this one is it really helps the students to focus on the main ideas with all of these different questions. It helps them to again identify what's happening with Q and K, talk about the differences in the concentrations, and then also identify the color changes and if the reaction is or is not not at equilibrium. In station two, we were looking at a saturated solution of sodium chloride. So again, I had the students write the case of C for this reaction, and then I had them actually add some saturated sodium chloride to a test tube and add 12 molar hydrochloric acid. This was the station that I told them, you have to be extremely careful. So I only gave them a really small dropper bottle of 12 molar hydrochloric acid, and they were so great with it. And so with this station, my students were adding the 12 molar hydrochloric acid. And then of course they saw that the sodium chloride was produced. They saw it kind of precipitate out. And again, I asked them to incorporate a discussion of Q versus K. In the third station, we were looking at the cobalt chloride test paper, looking at how when you add water to it, how it changes to pink. And then of course, it'll change back to blue once you evaporate the water. So I had the students put some um, water on it and then I had them add it to a hot plate. And so that also had them to um, basically explain what's going on to cause this equilibria to occur. In station four, we were looking at the effect of temperature on a cobalt-related complex ion. And what I like so much about this one is I didn't tell them whether it was endothermic or exothermic. They actually had to rely on their observations to tell them that. So I liked this station a lot because I thought it was pretty cool for them to kind of think through, like if it's turning pink, if I'm putting it in cold, what does that say about the energetics of the reaction? One of my other favorites was actually station five. So in station five, we were looking at some complex ion equilibria with hydrated ions. And this is a real simple one to do. So if you just take copper two chloride and just take some solid and put it inside a test tube, have them observe it and then have them mix it up, the students will see that it turns blue. So it goes from green to blue. And again, this is great for setting up the students for success to explain why this happens in terms of concentration changes. And so we were talking about, you know, Q versus K and why the reaction is shifting left to see that blue color. And so that was another really great station to drive home that point of the Q versus the K. And then the very last station was the thinking station where I asked my students to look at a, a cobalt system I had them add some water to it. So it started out as purple, and then I had them add some water to it, and they saw that it shifted to pink. And so I asked them to write the expression, and then I wanted to talk with them a little bit about like, if you're adding water, what is that changing? And so again, we focus on concentration changes and Q versus K. And then my students were able to rationalize that with the blue color, because with the blue color, when you add acetone, the acetone actually interacts with the water molecules. And so my students had to work hard to try and figure out like, what's happening? How come in the acetone layer, we're seeing all blue? And then they finally realized, oh, that means that there's no complex ion really present in that area. That's why it's completely blue. So they were able to use the intermolecular forces of attraction to explain why we don't see pink when we add acetone to this equilibrium system. Overall, I think it was a really good lab experience. I do have some tweaks that I wanna make. Like for example, I want to make sure that I put a pressure station, a pressure change station in probably next year. I also would like to change the cobalt chloride test paper station 
because I felt like the students had a really hard time understanding that one um, when really it was just, you know, addition of water versus evaporation of water. Um, so I might try to maybe substitute in a pressure station for that one. But other than that, I thought the stations were pretty well put together. I think this set of stations went really well for the students. I think it helped them to internalize Le Chatelier's principle and what it actually means about equilibrium position. So it is about that time. It's going to be a little stormy later on. We're supposed to get some freezing rain. So I'm going to get out of here. But I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. I thank you so much for watching this channel. Please let me know if you have any ideas for maybe a pressure station or any other cool Le Chatelier's demos that you guys do. I would love to know what they are. Leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to check in with you guys next week.